Daniel, after taking out a volunteer, we move mm -hmm. our sights and we try taking on piracy. We're ending piracy, yes. Daniel, in I mean, all that we can. The music community, the artist community, they, they've got to be thrilled with us. Look, Is let's that, let's Napster this thing. Let's just we, bite it. Let's just get right after it. We're talking Mississippi State. We're talking how we can attack them and how we can dismantle them here on Locked on Bulldogs. You are Locked on Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Hello and welcome to the Locked on Bulldogs podcast. I am Daniel. He is Clint. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment down there. Today's episode brought to you by Sling TV. Thank you, Sling TV. Also, Sling TV. Subscribe to that. And uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. Wherever you get your podcast, we are there. Also, you can find us on audio. Uh, listen to us on the way to or from the office or whenever is convenient for you. Um, happy to be here. It's Wednesday. Again, every day, your team every day, the Lockdown Bulldogs podcast. So let's get into Mississippi State. It's time to turn the page. Um, Gosh, I don't want to, but I hear you. We have to. I don't want to. but we Regular season wins don't feel like that very often. And it's... And it's about no, the atmosphere don't. and it's about, you know, the, 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 the rivalry and the, the, the competition. Tennessee's a great team. And so it's a great win when you yeah. beat a great team, but it's also about the way Tennessee fans run their mouth. And so it just, you, you all made us and you're not here anymore, but y'all made this so much sweeter. It's, it was a lot of fun. If you want to know what a Tennessee fan is, Go back and listen to, I think, last Tuesday's episode. Um, just a quick recap of the Tennessee football program, very good. The Tennessee fandom, uh, not suspect. great. It's quite suspect. Uh, let's talk about Mississippi State, though. They ring a lot of bells in the stadium. No, this is a game. Literally. This is a game that John Tweet Sports has had circled for uh, years, multiple years. He's been looking at and saying he's been on a sweat. He's been in a full sweat about this game, and it's this now man, here. This man has lost thirty-five pounds in two years just sweating over this thing. Absolutely, people like you've been working out, John. Like, no, Mississippi. We got to travel to Mississippi State. Coming up in November 2022. Well, guess what, John? It's November 2022, and we out here. We here. Um, this Mississippi State team, Clint, has had a bit of an up and a down year. They, yeah. There's some highs. There's some lows. And it what seems to be the case with every Mike Leach, Mike Leach coach team, the, the good moments make the bad moments almost inexplicable when you think about Mississippi State. Look, when they were earlier on in the season, when they were breaking records again for accuracy and slinging the ball over the yard and coming up with a defense and playing some really good football against some really good teams, they looked to be outclassing. And again, it was one of these situations where the, the pirate, uh, Mike Leach, is all of a sudden getting acclimated to the SEC. And, and this was, again, he has his quarterback – he has the quarterback for his system. Will yep. Rogers is the uh, the perfect piece for yep. Mike Leach. Yep. And, and all of a sudden, there's other games where you're reminded, oh, no, this is the Washington State Mike Leach that we know and love, where he just fumbles games that he shouldn't fumble. He He's far too over his head to understand how significant these plays are. And, and that has been the very, very, very hot and cold Mississippi State Bulldogs this entire year. It has, and you know some of the the wins against like Texas A and M and Arkansas don't quite look as good as they did when Mississippi State got those wins, and you thought like, oh well, this Mississippi State program, you know, they beat Arkansas forty to seventeen. You know, they really they took it to them. Oh, but the week before that, they they really. They laid it on Texas A and M. They didn't. Again, they're not just squeaking by some no. of these. They're scoring forty plus points, um, and the defense has been pretty good too, which we'll talk about uh, in in a couple segments. But 
again, it's it's sort of a matter of yes, they came out looking pretty competent, looking fairly good, but then you look back and you say, oh, okay, well, actually, the SEC West is very down Ooh, this year. How dare you? Uh, I mean, I'll just go to it. I mean, Georgia fans, for some reason, are going to hate this, but whatever, I don't care. The SEC is down this year, and I don't. It's still the best conference in college football this Hands year, down. but the SEC is not as good as the SEC was last year. And you need to look no further than a team like Arkansas to see that. Arkansas loses to Liberty last week. LSU under Brian Kelly has just has just beat the most prolific roster developed team in college football history. Yeah. Brian Kelly LSU on what appears to be their fourth quarterback with everyone gone. Yeah, so you look at some of these results from Mississippi State again. The signature wins, A&M, Arkansas, these are not great wins because these are these are programs we now know are not good at all this year. Fraudulent. Week. Very bad teams. Then you throw in games like a loss to Kentucky. And that loss didn't look so bad at the time. Early season, it did not. But now, see, Kentucky the thing getting is... Kentucky slapped all over the road, Daniel. Kentucky... Their and, cilantro is trying to be chopped, we, and it is. It's, it's like not. Like a garden hose. We're That's talking exactly about like right. a that garden is hose gar- trying to exactly chop cilantro. Right. You, it can't chop that way. You need it won't a, do that. You need no. a blade. You, you need, need blade. something of a blade. Correct. Um, so, again, Mississippi State... A bit of a hot and cold team, but then when you look at the scope of it, you sort of zoom out. You realize Mississippi State's just not that good no. this year. They've not had good results, which again is baffling because we're going to get to in the next segment. Mississippi State has good players. Individual units on this team yeah. are actually surprisingly very good. Not just good, very good on this team. Yeah. But when you put it all together. Uh, something's not so let's right. Let's talk about Mississippi State's offense versus the Georgia defense. We're going to do that next in segment two, and then we'll flip it, talk about the Georgia offense against the Mississippi State defense as we break down the game on Saturday in Starkville. But Daniel, let's say you want to keep your goods and keep everything that you have. The big trophy case. I do want to keep my goods. Great. I'm glad they're you my do. goods. Who wants to give those goods away? Who wants to let a, a wooden pegged animal come into their home and take these things? Protect yourself from thieves and pirates and mm-hmm. swashbucklers. It's with mandatory simplicity. that we do things like that. We have got to do things like that. It, if you don't do it, you you may or may not be breaking rules. You, simply well, safe. Well, it's, un, it's unclear. <laughs> simply What's safe. clear is that simply safe is a way to protect your home way and to protect your goods. Everything, all the possessions, all the goods, mm-hmm. everything that you need. Simply safe is fantastic for it. They have around the clock monitoring. They have motion detectors. They have door detectors. They have window detectors. They have video surveillance, light surveillance. They have it all. Simply safe is easy to use. It's very, very simple. It's in the name itself. And right now, you can get a huge, huge discount on monitoring services over at Simply Safe. Put them a promo code locked on. Simply safe, locked on. It is your way to keep everything you have safe. All right, Clint, let's talk about this um, Mike Leach-led offense from Mississippi State. Uh, Will Rogers, obviously, leading the SEC in passing. Uh, he is the perfect quarterback for the system. He is. He is, um, and, and he is a dynamic weapon in the passing game. Do, do not make a mistake. quarterback, y'all. This is not just a system quarterback. We say he's the perfect quarterback for the system. That's not a an effort to insult the young man. It's not an effort to make light of his skills as a quarterback. No. He thrives in this kind of quick release, get the ball out and find uh, players in space type of offense. Mississippi state has some weapons at receiver as well. They've been running the ball a lot more this year than any Mississippi state team, any Mike Leach team I've ever seen okay. uh, do. Which is interesting. They do have talented backs, and they're actually utilizing them. Unfortunately, against Georgia, I I can't imagine that that game plan is going to... I think we're going to see Mike Leach revert back to the the warm blanket that is Mm. the air raid, throw it 95% of the time. I think you're going to see... 50 passing attempts in this game, minimum for Will Rogers, 
which is going to mean, Clint, that mm-hmm. as our defense matches up against them, what's going to be the key for us to win that matchup? Look, here's the key, and, and they've Mississippi State has gone on some crazy drives. If you look back at their, their games, I think they may have had like a 15-play, 30-yard field goal attempt drive. And I'm, and I'm you not heard him. Kidding. Don't rewind. You don't have to hit that 15-second back. That's he, You I'm heard not, it correctly. I, and this happens on the frequent for these guys. Okay, it's very bizarre. It's very weird. So what you want to go ahead and see is you want to go ahead and, and it's going to demand what Mike Leach and what this system does is it puts pressure on the defense to come up to play assignment football, to play man football or zone, whatever you're doing, and come up and tackle in space. Now, Daniel, I got a quick question for you about these defensive backs at Georgia. Okay. Um, Ready? It's, it's going to be a hard one. It's going to be a hard one. I'm going to try my best. Okay. Would you say that these defensive backs at Georgia are skilled or unskilled at tackling ball carriers in space? Well, I would have to look back at some recent history. Hold on. Oh, wait. I've just recently done so. Just a couple days. And um, there's a guy, he wears number 24. I can't Mm. recall his name right Mm. now, but a young man uh, might have a couple interceptions on the year, but um, also has shown us specifically last week that he likes to get his nose in there towards the football, and Malachi Starks likes to come in there and hit you, Clint. Oh, yes. When he comes in and hits, he... He typically has a running start, and um, of he, significant amount. He don't miss. Clint. No, when when he puts his, um, he's a little. He got a little Monty Rice in him, he, Daniel. When bit. he put hands on you, you go down, right to the ground. Yeah, that's, no, that's, that's Keely. We saw it from Keely Ringo. Yes, we saw it from. We know it from Christopher Smith. Christopher Smith is just a tough dude. Like that's just a. That's just a tough MF. If you, like you, if don't you want... want to be the best safety in America and therefore the best, whatever ceiling or floor you have skill wise, if you want to maximize that and potentially get into the league, go play football at Georgia because those are tough, tackling, yeah. heady guys. And then, Clint, the guy that's quickly becoming my favorite player in the secondary. You, mm-hmm. you love you some Malachi Stark. I do. Play. I really do. But this Kamari Laster kid, I'm telling you, this is this is as physical of a corner as I have seen at Georgia, maybe ever. Keely like, Ringo is a quiet, confidence guy. Like he's got that swagger, and he knows he's got technique. Oh, absolutely. He, he just he just immense a cucumber talent. Out there. And and Keely Ringo's got size that is almost yes. unprecedented. Yes. Like in terms of how but you how want, thick he is, how big he is. You want to talk about a dude who has insanely bad intentions for a defensive back for a man his size. And he don't care. He a dude that at a bar, he ain't, no one is backing him down. He will take on anybody. That's Kamari Lasseter. Yeah. And that's the mindset that you need as a corner. Because again, I think the game plan in this, in this game is going to be pretty similar. I think we're going to try to pressure Will Rogers Mm -hmm. with the defensive front. I think we're going to try to get pressure straight up the middle because again, the ball's out so quick that the really the only way to disrupt is to bring pressure straight up the middle, which you saw a lot against Tennessee. And I think the the, the game plan is going to kind of largely be be ready for the short, quick stuff. Now, Mississippi State does not take the top off the way that Tennessee does, and so you don't have no. to be quite so respectful. And so you'll probably see less cushion in this game, which actually might mean that Mississippi State might complete a pass of 20-plus yards in this game, unlike Tennessee did before garbage time. So hold on, Daniel, but 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 an explosive team can't be held down. Get that 15-second rewind and just make sure you heard what I said correctly. Okay. Uh, before garbage time, Tennessee, zero passes of 20-plus yards. That's shocking. So Mississippi State actually might do that because you might see a lot more coverage you know press coverage uh one-on-ones on on the outside um and so you might get a few shots over the top but in general i think you you are looking to defend that short quick passing game because as you said mike leach has no problem trying to very slowly sometimes painfully slowly move the ball down the field and if you if you enjoy four yard completions or 
Just get your popcorn get ready. Get your popcorn ready. Yep, thank you. If you enjoy four-yard throws with a linebacker coming over the top to swat the ball down and you going while you wait to see if it's a pass interference or not, this is the game for you. Like, there's going to be a lot of times you're going to cheer and then a flag is just going to fly in from the right-hand side of your television. The option route, the tight end or running back or wide receiver that sits down and sees if he's going to keep that hook, keep that curl, or extend it over to a dig or take it as an out based upon what the zone. That is the Mike Leach system. And yes, get used to it. Get ready for it. It's going to infuriate you. And we're going to have to tackle. That, that's it. It's we're going just, to be a lot going of tackling. To tackle. And again, this Kirby has shown we will stop you in the red zone. Yep. And you cannot sustain it. You might sustain it for a drive. You might sustain it for a quarter. But you can't sustain this against this defense. And so we will happily let you dink and dunk your way around. Have at and it. You'll see that this week against Mississippi State, but I do not expect it to equate to a lot of points for the lesser Bulldogs. No, we ain't going to talk about that. Points. Come on now. Uh, We're going to be back after this, but let you know first about Built Bar. Built Bar is the tastiest protein bar on planet Earth. They are fantastic. They have all them flavors. They have all them tasty treats. They got some that have a little crispy, some that has mallow in it. If you don't know about mallow and what Mm. the mallow does after you get done toasting it, Built Bar has done an amazing job with it. Uh, They are high in protein, low in sugar, high uh, in fiber, low on the gut. Meal replacement on the go, pre-workout, post-workout. Built Bar is your place to go for on-the-go protein. Tastes like a candy bar. Right now, get 20% off your entire order with BuiltBar.com. Promo code locked on. It's 20% off your entire order right now. BuiltBar.com. So we switch to the offensive side of the ball for Georgia against this Mississippi State defense and um, again I think an underperforming unit for Mississippi State top 50 defense still not not awful no okay a top 50 defense in college football but you look at some of the results and often the defense has I think underperformed for the talent that they have on the field. And there's not really a unit that stands out. That to me is the thing about Mississippi state's defense. No, Daniel, if you want to talk about a team, you said underperforming, it's just lapses. Like it's, it's just Mm -hmm. eventually there's, there's going to be a lapse on this team. There's going to be not only blown assignment, but just a blown uh, one-on-one matchup. Right. And, and it's, it ends, it results in a crease being paved. Um, they can't withstand sustained drives of any type, and they can't take sustained pressures from teams. If an offense is just consistent, and if an offense is just B, B minus all game, eventually this defense breaks. Uh, and when you, and, and that comes down to me, I don't know who the DC is over at Mississippi State, but they should not be employed. Daniel, because that's, I mean, you can have some talent lacking teams on defense, but you shouldn't be able to lean on them enough where they just kind of wilt. And that's the, that's the only word I could use for this defense. They wilt over the course of a game. They can't stand up to it. And that's on the DC for not getting them in better position and calling better plays and and preparing these guys more uh, against a team. So you're telling me that Georgia's coming hot off its best performance Mm -hmm. on offense to Mm -hmm. date that mm-hmm. Oregon game outside. And now you get to go just feast on lesser talent and undisciplined and less coached and less inventive defense. The wilting is going to happen very, very quickly in this game, Daniel. Yeah. I mean, you're coming off of a back to back weeks. You, you hold Alabama to 30. The offense looks at- atrocious in that game. The worst. But you hold Alabama to 30, which you think, okay, Alabama, they're not the same Alabama team. We've talked about that. And then you come out last week, and look, I know that Cadillac Williams is, number one, a better coach than Brian Harson, 
And number two, probably not nearly as distracted, if you know what I mean, as Brian Harson is while on the job. And it's because he was worried about being fired, not because of anything else, right? It's all of the above. Okay. It's all two things, Clint, can be true at the same time. In Brian Harson's case, those are the two things. Uh <laughs> I know Cadillac Williams is has this Auburn team playing inspired football right now. But if you're Mississippi State last week, you're coming off a performance where you gave up 33 points to the Auburn Tigers, Clint. Auburn, including four rushing touchdowns and over 200 yards on the ground. Clint, um... What is the Mississippi State front, and why is the offensive line that is gelling and coming together and proving themselves to be the best unit in college football, possibly, why is that unit going to make them wish that they had entered the transfer portal before week 10? See, it's, 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 it's like a Mack truck mm. and a bunny rabbit. Okay, Daniel. That, yeah, that's that's what's being faced right now from Mississippi mm -hmm. State. They just they don't have the dudes, and even if they had the dudes, they don't have the scheme, and even if they had the scheme, they don't have the tenacity because the Georgia offensive line has all of that. I could see us in this game. Like honestly, if you told me Stetson Bennett in the first quarter got dead arm, like he just armed, just all of a sudden was like, oh no, I can't lift it above my shoulder, and you kept him in the game. I'm fine. We'd be fine. We're going to be fine. They don't, they just, it's not SEC football. I, like, like that's, that's the weirdest say. Auburn's quarterback last week was seven for 22 for 75 yards passing. <laughs> and they scored 33 points oh, on no. offense. Oh no. No pick sixes. 33 points on offense. I, I think there was a safety in there, actually. So they scored 31. They scored 31 on offense. Uh, By the way, Zach Arnett is the um, DC down there. In, soon, uh, soon to be was the DC. Well, he his most illustrious so far was the defensive coordinator at the powerhouse San Diego State. Oh, San Diego State. Correct. That's old Ron Burgundy. Um, yeah, George is going to run the ball a lot in this game that's Lots. predictions because again what did we say on yesterday's podcast kirby mm -hmm. doesn't care he doesn't care about the show he doesn't care about looking good he doesn't care what you want and as much as stetson should be in new york for the heisman ceremony do you also doesn't care about the heisman trophy doesn't care stetson bennett doesn't care about the Heisman. i guarantee you guarantee you he cares about another natty and he cares about proving doubters and he, he cares, cares about, about making hate. it to the SEC championship game and winning it this time. That's he what does. he cares about. He, I guarantee you he wants that game more than any game. Oh, he Which wants to. Which is why when, when Jaden Daniels and LSU come calling. Daniel. Daniel. It's Brian. <laughs> it's Brian Kelly in the playoff. Are, okay. We're going to talk about unlocks tomorrow. Ooh, ooh. Ole Miss, Alabama, that game, because it. <laughs> um, it might not be LSU in the because they they're going to lose one of those Ole next Miss, two games. Ole, Ole Miss only got one loss, Daniel. Yeah, it is two LSU. Uh, uh, so it, it we'll see. We'll see. We'll, what see. Happens. we'll talk. It doesn't matter. Stetson Bennett doesn't care about the stats. Kirby Smart doesn't care about the stats. You're going to see Georgia run the ball and try to get out of here. Brandon this might Robinson's be going to have a billion carries in this. This game. might be the second half Missouri all over again. Yeah, the reason that we're going to throw the ball is to keep people happy, keep people engaged. Um, I I would love to see A.D. Mitchell get out there and jog in this game, but oh he doesn't gosh. need to do anything else other than that. Just just, just warm up and suit get up. Get a little sweat. Just sure. Get a little sweat going. That'd be great. Um, yeah, I just I don't think this defensive front from Mississippi State has any they chance. Hang. They can't hang. This is 
This is what I'm talking about. It's one of the best run defenses in the SEC last week against Tennessee. We ran it all over them. And now you turn the page to the other side of the spectrum and Mississippi State. It doesn't look great in terms of the prospects for Mississippi State and the, and the lesser Bulldogs defense chances of stopping this offense. Um, yeah, I don't see... I don't see a lot of resistance. We'll, we'll, we'll give you official predictions tomorrow in terms of actual score of the game, what we think is going to happen, who we think is going to win, and by how many. Um, and then we will tell you if you need to jump in on that spread, if you need to jump in on that money line, and what kind of wagers you need to be making as we get ready for... <laughs> it's just a... Just alert. Make money while you Make still can. Money. Uh, this has been the Lockdown Bulldogs podcast. Your team every day. We'll see you guys tomorrow. See ya.